Are you ready for some grid time? Yeah! <laughs> AG Grid comes with lots of column filters out of the box, but you can also build your own filters. Let me show you how. We will start with basic AG Grid community application. We can see row data, some column definitions, default call def, but initial column width, enabled row animations for rows to move smoothly across the grid, and I have an empty year filter JS to build a filter for the year column. First off, let's enable the default filter to see what's it like. I will open the filter in the UI and we can see the default filter working. What we want to do next is replace this filter UI with our own custom UI using class components with our own custom filter logic. I'm going to start with the simplest possible component, one that just prints hello world. To do this, I need two mandatory methods in it which is called once when the filter is created and it is a way for us to receive params from the grid and get GUI to return an HTML element for the filter. Then going back to the main grid configuration, we'll use the new year filter component and set it as a filter to be used inside the year column instead of the default filter. I will open our filter in the UI and we have our hello world component useless as a filter, but it does show you how to wire your custom filter into the grid. What's left to do now is to add the filter functionality. Let us return to the year filter. The grid needs to know when the filter is updated and it will ask questions to the filter components such as is the filter active or does this row pass the active filter and for this reason when the filter component is instantiated the grid provides params containing APIs, utility methods and cell and row values. The first function that we declare update filter will call a utility method filter changed callback. It is used to notify the grid when the filter component is updated and the grid will then respond by filtering the grid data. These four methods here are the four mandatory methods needed in order for our filter to work. This one here is filter active. The grid will call to know whether the filter is active or not. Return true for active filter and false for not. If it is active, the grid will call this method once for each row inside the grid asking the filter component does this row pass your current filter get model and set model are used when the grids api get filter model and set filter model are used but for the moment we're going to put these aside and focus on getting these two methods to work I am now creating a UI consisting of two radio buttons. First, I'll make a helper function to make the buttons and then add the buttons. One button will turn the filter off and the other button will turn the filter on. Add a bit of styling, create filter state variable, and we will use on change event to update filter state and notify the grid when the filter is updated. And bara bing, bara boom, we're done. A little recap. In the code, you can see we made a helper function for making radio buttons and created radio buttons with values for filter off and a filter on. We created a variable to store filter state and added on change event listener to all the radio buttons with a callback to update filter state and to notify the grid that filter is updated. We do this by calling filter changed callback. And so here is our magnificent filter UI. As you might have realized, UI is ready, but the filter needs some logic in is filter active and does filter pass. So whenever we click a radio button, we notify the grid that a change has occurred in the filter. In turn, the grid asks our filter component, is the filter active? Let's implement is the filter active by returning true when the filter state is equal to not filter off. Whenever the is filter active returns true, the grid will then call those filter pass on each row. But for the time being, let's just return false on each row. This means all rows will be filtered out when the filter is on. That should be everything. Let's go back to the filter UI and what the heck? Oh wait, it was meant to filter out all the rows, which means it is working, but still not very useful as a filter. Let's add a few options, year 2004 and 2008, an update does filter pass to match the year. And alakazam, it works. Let's just recap into the code. We have three radio buttons with values, filter off 2004 and 2008. Whenever a button is clicked, we update the filter state and the grid is notified that filter is updated. Then it will ask the filter component, is the filter active? We say the filter is active when the filter state is anything except 
filter off. And then for DOS filter pass, we are matching the year attribute of the data and making sure it equals to filter state. Now, there are two objects I've used that glanced over. They are the params that are passed into our component and params that are passed through DOS filter pass. Let's have a look at each one of those and start with console logging the params received into the component. In the console on the right hand side, we can see what is inside params. There is a bunch of really good stuff that the grid gives us to help with the filter building. For example, I can see some column information in column devs and the column object. And would you look at that? There is the callback that I used, the filter changed callback. Remember, we use that over there. Now to go through these params one by one will be too much for this video. So please check the documentation to see the specifics on each of these. You might be thinking, but these are the params that the grid provides us. What if I want to provide my own? Well, the answer is yes, you can. I will demonstrate this by making a configurable title. The UI will get the title from params. Let's return to main.js and use filter params to pass the title my custom filter to the filter component. Please note that it is done on the year column definition with the filter component. When I open the filter now, we can see my custom filter title. And if we expand the params in the console, we can see the title property with the value of my custom filter, which is the title that we're using in our filter template. Now, how cool is that? Very cool. Moving away from the params received by the component to the params received in DOS filter pass method. These params contain information about the row, which the filter can then use to know whether this row should pass the filter or not. So here in the console, I can see that we are providing with data and the node. The data is a piece of information that the application gave us for this row. We can see column fields like the age, athlete, bronze, country, and so on. And the node is the grid's row node, where the grid keeps state information about the row, such as the row index. Right, let's close down the console and take this print statement out. Now this line where we look at the year attribute of the data isn't very good because I've hard coded this filter just to look at the year attributes. What we would ideally like with filters is to have them reusable so they don't have a dependency in what field is being used. So I'm going to pull the field information from the column definition that was provided in the components params. So here I'm pulling the field from the column def and using it to access the data. And this field is the field as specified in my column definition. So a quick test and my filter is still working, but in a cooler way. So the field is no longer hard coded. That's great. I'm going to change it now so that the values are not hard coded. I'll be just a second, add some code and a bit of cleanup. And I'll open the filter in the UI and let's check the code. All I've done here is enhance the template. At the top, we have the title as before. I've added a div to display the filter state. Then I have one button that will always turn the filter off. And then I have multiple buttons based on the values received from params passed through the filter params. In our column definitions, we can see the values that I provided and filter params as filter options. In the UI, we can see that our filter component received the values and rendered buttons for updating filter state 2000, 2006 and 2008. And I'm updating filter state and filter state display display in update filter function. Now that the filter is generic, we can apply it to more than one column. So we'll just change its name to my filter and we will add it to the age column. We'll change the titles and we'll pass in different values. So now the filter appears in the age column as well. Oh yeah, we can see 18, 19, 20, 21. Let's leave it at 20. Now let's go to the year column. I will further filter on the year by 2006. So we filtered year by 2006 and age by 20 using the same custom filter. Okay, that's a lot to take in. If you're still here with me, well done. Take a deep breath. <sighs> And let's get back to our custom filter and we'll move on to the next topic, which is filter models. Using filter models, the grid is able to save the filter state and then restore the filter state at a later point. And that's done by the grid calling get model and set model methods of the filter. 
I will code these up very quick and then explain. When the grid wants to query the filter state, it calls get model. And if the filter is off, we return back undefined. That means there is no model or the filter is not active. When the grid wants to restore the state, it will call set model and pass in the model that was returned from the get model method. We'll then check if it is undefined or null. And if it is, we'll set the filter to off, meaning the filter is not active. Otherwise, we'll set the filter state to what was passed in our model. The structure of the model can be whatever you want. It's a custom filter. So the structure of this model here will be custom to your filter. The grid doesn't look at the details of the model. It just takes it off the filter and then provides it back to the filter again when it's needed. Now we just need to add the functions to save and load filter state so we can demonstrate these in action. I've introduced two buttons to save and to load filter model. When save is clicked, we call get filter model on the grid's API. The grid will in turn call get model on any active filter. Then we save the model in saved filter model and print the model in the console. Then, when load is clicked, we do the opposite. We call set filter model on the grid's API, passing in the model that we have previously saved. Alrighty, let's test. I'll open up the console, set some filters. On year, I'll set it to 2000, and on age, I'll set it to 18. And then click on save. In the console, I can see states for the two filters that the age has been set to 18 and year has been set to 2000. Now I'll clear the filter in the UI, and then when I hit load, we we can see that the filter gets applied to both columns again. Now how cool is that? So year column is filtered by 2000 and age column filtered by 18. Oh where have you been all my life at your grid? The last thing I'm going to go through is the additional optional methods available on your custom filter API. So these four methods here are the four mandatory methods for custom filter. You must implement these for, for it to work. First two are to do with the filtering itself and then the second two are to do with when the grid tries to save and restore the filter state. I will copy in the optional methods into our filter component and go through these methods one by one. The get model as string helps with floating filters. To help explain, I will enable floating filters. That's done by setting the floating filter tag to true on column definitions. Now that we have some floating filters, we can see this extra bar has appeared underneath the header. This is the floating filter for year and this is the floating filter for age. However, when I go and change the filter, nothing appears in the floating filter. Now let's implement get model as string to return back a string representation of the filter state. So in get model a string, I am now saying if the filter is off, then return back an empty string. Otherwise, return back the state. Then retesting the filter, I can see as I change the filter, the floating filter displays the read only representation of the state. The floating filter is fully customizable. Just like you can provide your own filters, you can provide your own floating filters. And how to do this is a video in its own. What I've done here is use the read only floating filter. And that's the the one that comes with AG grid. And if I don't specify which floating filter component I want for my filter, it will provide us read only instead. And that's where get model a string is used for the read only floating filter to present a string representation of the filter state that you can use if you don't have the time or can't be bothered to create your own custom floating filter component. Moving on to the next optional method on new rows loaded. This will get called every time new rows are loaded into the grid. This is useful if your filter has a dependency on the data inside the grid. For example, if you're providing a selection of all the available values, you'll need to load those values every time new data is loaded. That logic would be best placed inside the new rows loaded method. The next optional method is on any filter changed, and this gets called when another filter has changed. This is useful if I want to change what's in my filter based on the state of another filter. For example, suppose in my filter I'm displaying values A, B and C because the data has values A, B and C. Then another filter is activated resulting in only A and B being shown in the values in the grid. I may then wish to update my filter to only show A and B and leave out C because it's no longer relevant. The logic for that would belong in on any filter changed. The next optional method is destroy. I will print out when the filter is created and before the filter is destroyed. 
Now you'll notice that the filter is only created when it's shown for the first time. So if I click on year, you'll see that the year filter was created. Then when I hide the filter, it does not get destroyed. It still exists in the background. The same goes for age that will now get created when I show the filter for the first time. I'm going to click away. It'll still exist in the background. It won't get destroyed. The reason for this is the filter still has to exist in the background with its state. For example, those filter paths will still be called on the filter even though we don't see the filter on the screen. Even if the filter is inactive, the filter component will exist and will remain to exist as long as the column exists. If the column is removed from the grid, for example by setting new columns, then the filter will get destroyed. Okay, moving down to our last optional method, which is after GUI attached. After GUI attached is called following the custom filter UI being put inside the DOM. This is handy if, for example, you want to focus a particular element inside your filter UI. For example, the provided filter will focus a text field to take input from the keyboard when the filter is first displayed. And that is the whole API that the grid uses to interact with your custom filter. But in addition to the grid using the API, your application can also get a reference to the filter instance and call its API as well. Let me show you how to do that with an example. I'm going to add a method to the filter API and then code up a button to call this method. Let me finish coding that up. Then I'll explain. This is the new button that I've implemented, custom API. You can see just above the grid. When the button is clicked, then this listener will get called. The listener uses grid's API method, get filter instance. The method takes column ID, in this case I've passed in year, and then it returns the instance via a callback method. Once we have the instance, we can then call whatever method we want on that instance. And by whatever method we want, I mean any method that's inside the filter. And in this example, I'm calling this method here, my custom filter method, which is a method that the grid does not need, but this custom filter has provided it, allowing us to have some custom functionality inside this filter that's specific to your application. If I click custom API, we can see that the filter is first created and then my custom filter method was called. If I click a few times, the method is called a few times. You will have also noticed that the filter wasn't created until we called for the custom API. And that's why we need to provide a callback here, because to get the instance of a filter is an asynchronous operation. When you call get filter instance, the filter may not exist yet. That's why we need to pass it back via a callback. And that brings us to the end of this video. Woo! Column filters are probably one of the more advanced customizations you can do for AG Grid that we went through and built up from scratch within about 15 minutes. Once you know these tools, they become your bread and butter, and then you'll be able to write some pretty cool custom filters for your application. I will have to do another video on floating filters, so keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, if you like this video, like it, place a comment, tell your friends, share it, subscribe to the channel, and may the force of the grid be with you.